Well, hello and welcome to Healing School. Uh, it's my honor to be here today and have you here with us here and online. Uh, I just want to take this time to thank my pastors for the opportunity today. Uh, it, uh, it is a great honor and it is one that I don't take lightly. So thank you very, very much for this opportunity. Today, what we want to endeavor to do is to get into the Word and find out about the connection between our words and authority and how that all plays into the healing power of God. So if you've got your Bibles there in front of you, let's go to Psalm 103 and we'll read verses 1 through 5. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all thine iniquities, who heals all thy diseases, who redeems thy life from destruction, who crowns thee with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfies thy mouth with good things, so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. Those verses right there, you're prophesying to yourself. You're prophesying your own life when you take these verses and you put them in your mouth and you speak them out of your heart. Now, a minister told the story one time uh, that they, heard, they overheard a man at uh, a medical office and he was, having, he was having a procedure done, he was having a lot of work done, and this man said out of his mouth, out of his own mouth, he said, bad things begin to happen in your body after you become 60 years old. And that's what he told the receptionist. Well, he was prophesying his own demise. You see that? He said, bad things happen to me in my body after I became 60 years old. Now this minister said immediately that, that the spirit within them was alarmed. And this minister said, no, 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 I don't receive that in Jesus' name. And began to refresh themselves and what they learned about the healing power of words. So do you see that there in Psalm 103? That you can strengthen your confession of faith with these words? You have to take authority and you have to take dominion over your body with your words, all right? Look at Matthew 12. Let's see what Jesus says about this. Matthew chapter 12 and verses 34 through 37. He said, O generation of vipers, how can you, being evil, speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. A good man out of the good treasure of the heart brings forth good things, and an evil man out of the evil treasure brings forth evil things. But I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. For by thy words you shall be justified, and by thy words you shall be condemned. Now the NLT says it this way, the words you say will either acquit you or condemn you. Now the message is even a little stronger. It says words can be your salvation. Words can also be your damnation. Now my words, your words, they determine which kingdom we're walking in. All right? Now remember that story we, we just talked about? The world and, and some Christians generally talk like that man in that doctor's office. That's how they're talking and that's how they're speaking they don't realize the power that's in their words. But praise God, we're getting light on this, and, 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 I, and I hope, and my hope is, that at the end of this, we see how important it is what's coming out of our mouth, and how, with the right words, with, with God's word in our spirit and coming out of our mouth, then we get God's results. See, that's why he's given it to us in, in word form and book form so you can take it. You can take it and you get his results because it's his word. All right. 
By your words, you're healed, and by your words, you're sick. Now, that's, that's strong, but it's true. Look at Proverbs 10, 14. And in the NIV, it says it this way. It says, wise men store up knowledge, but the mouth of a fool invites ruin. No one has a choice of whether or not they live by words. We don't have that choice, all right? We don't have a choice of whether or not we live by words. But we do have a choice of what words we live by, all right? You choose. You get to choose which words you use. And the Bible says choose life, right? Choose words filled with life, all right? Some uh, medical research reports here. And you may have heard these before, but that's all right. They'll build your faith. And this is medical research concerning the power of words. Medical science has discovered that the part of the brain which controls human speech is connected to every nerve of the body. All right? Now, this is from an article in Reader's Digest. And they, they asked a question, is your health excellent, good, fair, or poor? All right. Now, a study of more than 2,800 men and women, ages 65 and older, found that those who rate their health as poor are four to five times more likely to die in the next four years than those who rate their health excellent. This was the case even if the examination showed the respondents to be in comparable health, meaning these people could be in the same health category, all right? They could have the same, same type of, of body. And one said they were poor, and one said they were in excellent health. The one that said they were in poor health was four to five times more likely to die within a four-year period than the one that said they were in excellent health. But they were both the same, all right? Now, these findings were supported by a review of five other large studies totaling 23,000 people. All right, so th this isn't just coincidence. This is medical research now. Brother Cap said this, people who have an image of themselves being in poor health will talk about poor health, even though they may be in good health. They seem to live out the reality of the image they have of themselves, even unto death. That's why we've got to see what God says about us in the Word and then we build that image on the inside of us until that's all we see. We don't see the symptoms. We don't, we don't see here with the report. We don't see that. We don't ignore it, but we choose to see a higher report. This was, a, this was from a newspaper article, and it was by a neurosurgeon, and it happened to be printed in uh, the Shreveport Times. All right. And he was using a method which he called, quote unquote, mental exercise, which involves telling your body what to do. Well, we've been talking about that. You've got to take authority. You've got to tell your body what to do. Now, he said this. He offered examples such as a diabetic who instructs his pancreas to secrete insulin or a person with hypertension to say several times a day, my blood pressure is 120 over 80. This doctor said, it makes no difference whether the patient even knows where his pancreas is or what 120 over 80 means. You know why? Because the body knows. You can tell your body, you can tell your blood pressure where to be at. You tell it. Your body knows what to do with the faith-filled words. And then there was an article about a lady that had a continual fever for several, several months. Doctors couldn't find anything wrong. When questioned, they discovered that when she got upset, now listen, this is what was coming out of her mouth. She would say, that just burns me up. And she would say it several times a day. They weren't sure if there was connection, but they asked her not to use that phrase anymore. And within weeks, her body temperature was normal. Well, that's not coincidence. She was having what she said. She was... She was taking authority over her body by saying, that burns me up, but it was authority in the wrong way. And then when she quit saying it, her body came back down to the, to the normal temperature it needed to be. See, there's a connection. 
there's a connection with what's coming out of our mouth and the healing power of God. Because we've talked about this at length, but let's go there again. Let's go to Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 20, and we'll read through 22, and then we'll move into, we'll move into uh, some scriptures here in Proverbs. But we'll start here in 420. My son, attend to my words. Incline thine ear unto my sayings. Let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of thine heart. For they are life unto those that find them, and health to all their flesh. All right? So we see that. We see that the word is life unto those that find it. And the word is health to all our flesh. So Proverbs 10, 11 says, The mouth of a righteous man is a well of life. That well meaning spring, purification, joy, source of life. The NLT says the words of the godly are a life-giving fountain. Well, that's what you want. That's what you want coming out of your mouth. That's what you want your body hearing a life-giving fountain, right? The mouth of the just is a vein of life, all right? Proverbs 12, 14. A man shall be satisfied with good by the fruit of his mouth. From the fruit of his lips, a man is filled with good things. Proverbs 12, 18. The tongue of the wise is health. Do you think God's trying to get this across to us? The Amplified of that verse says, The tongue of the wise brings healing. The tongue of the wise makes one well again. The tongue of the wise heals. Do you see your connection? Do you see what the connection of what's coming out of your mouth with the healing power of God? Proverbs 13, 3. He that keeps his mouth keeps his life, but he that openeth wide his lips shall have destruction. The NLT of that verse says, Those who control their tongue will have a long life. He who guards his lips guards his life, preserves his life, protects his own life. But it's not with your own protection, it's with the word. You're protecting your life with God's word coming out of your mouth. All right? Proverbs 15:4, a wholesome tongue is a tree of life. The Amplified says, a gentle tongue with its healing power is a tree of life. Healing power. All right? Proverbs 16, 24. Pleasant words are as a honeycomb, sweet to the soul, and health to the bones. Pleasant words are as a honeycomb, sweet to the mind, and healing to the body. Pleasing words are like honey, sweet to the soul, and new life to the bones. New life. New life to the bones. Proverbs 18, 20 through 21. A man's belly shall be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth, and with the increase of his lips shall he be filled. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. God's word translation in verse 21. The tongue has the power of life and death, and those who love to talk will have to eat their own words. All right? So again, we're seeing this connection. Now, we've talked about that. Let's talk about authority. All right? Now that you know, you know the power. You know what, what God has to say and what he thinks about the words that are coming out of our mouth. Then let's see what he says about using his words to take authority over our own body. So if you'll go with me to 1 Corinthians... And we'll start here in chapter 9. In verse 27. Now this is Paul. And he's speaking here and he says, But I keep under my body and bring it into subjection, lest that by any means, when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway or disqualified. I keep under my body and bring it into subjection. Now that word subjection means treat as a slave. Lead it along. Make it fully compliant to the will of a master. 
This doesn't have to do with just the dictates or lusts and demands of the flesh. All right? This word body is your physical body. We keep our physical bodies under subjection. All right? We make our bodies submit. Paul refused to allow his body to dominate him. And that's why we talk about at great length, don't let those symptoms keep talking. You take authority over those symptoms. You tell them what to do. You tell them that they're trespassing, and you demand that they leave according to the word because you've been given the authority to do so, right? In the NLT, it's, it's read this way. I discipline my body like an athlete, training it to do what it should. I keep on beating my body and making it my slave. Keep it under control. Keep it under, right? The Amplified says it like this, and I like this. But like a boxer, I buffet my body, handle it roughly, discipline it by hardships, and subdue it, for fear that after proclaiming to others the gospel and things pertaining to it, I myself should become unfit, not stand the test, be unapproved, and rejected as a counterfeit. He brought his body into subjection to his spirit. Well, my friend... If we're born again, and we are, <laughs> you're bringing your body into subjection of, of the brand new man, of the brand new born again spirit of God on the inside of us. And it has to. Your body has to listen to that. All right? His spirit took ascendancy over his body. Your body will respond to the commands of the human spirit. Your body will respond to your spirit. All right? Speak to your body and tell it to obey God's word. That's why we talked about before. You'll, the fruit of the lips, right? You can, you can use those scriptures, and we'll, we'll read over those. We'll read over some more about what to say to your body, and your body must line up with the word. It has to. All right? Don't let your body tell you what to do. That's where uh, th this, this is a good illustration where Pastor Steele talks about if all you can do is get out of bed and put one foot on the floor and stand up and then fall right back into bed, well, at least you got up. You got up. You did something that your body said you couldn't do or told you not to do. You know, you better not get up. You're sick. You can't get up. Yes, I can. Yes, I can. I tell my body what I'm going to do. Because the word says I'm healed, so I tell my body you're healed. And if all you do is get up and stand up and fall back into bed, you took a step. You acted on the word. You didn't just lay there and take it. All right? You tell your body what it can and cannot do. You do that. Why? Because you're a spirit. You tell your body what to do. Gloria Copeland says this, marshal yourself under the command of the Holy Spirit. That's up to you and that's up to me. We choose to do that. We choose to marshal ourselves under the command of the Holy Spirit. Either we do it or we don't. All right? Take dominion over your body in the same way that Adam was to take dominion over the earth. You've been given that right. You've been given that authority. You've been given God's word, and he backs his word. That's, that's the whole, oh my goodness, that's just how wonderful he is. He's given you his word that he will back up, so that you and he'll back up his word, and you take his word, and then you're speaking his word to your body, and then he backs it up. It's not you. You're making the choice. But you, that's where we talk about you're not healing yourself. He's the healer, but he's given you his word, right? If your spirit is dominating your body and the life of God is in your spirit, and it is, that life will flow into your body. This produces divine healing. Look at James 3. Verse 
James chapter 3, verse 2. For in many things we offend all. If any man offend not in word, the same is a perfect man, and able also to bridle the whole body. That word bridle means to curb, to control, to restrain. Take dominion over your body. You can do it. If it the, the NIV says it this way. If anyone is never at fault in what he says, he is a perfect man, able to keep his whole body in check. All right, and you mature into this. The NLT says, if we could control our tongues, we would be perfect and could also control ourselves in every other way. We have every right, every right to enforce our covenant right to be healed by taking authority over our body with God's word. We have covenant. We are in covenant. It's a, and it is a perfect covenant. It's a blood covenant. It was, you have been bought with a price. You, I mean, the blood of Jesus. Is there anything, is there anything the blood of Jesus can't fix? No, absolutely not. That's your covenant right. You have every covenant right to be healed by taking your authority that you find in this word and you're taking God's word and you use that, and you speak that over your body, God backs up his word. All right? John 14, 13 says, Whatsoever you shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. Whatever you demand is your Christian right, I will see to it that it's carried out. He personally sees to it that it's carried out. We have nothing to lose. Your body will respond to the faith demand made upon it by the word of God, spoken in faith. Right? You see that? That's why it's, it's, it's got to be in you. It can't just be something you've heard, something you heard somebody else say. It's got to be in you in order for you to take it by faith. See, that's what... I'll read it again. Your body will respond to the faith demand. The faith demand made upon it by the word. Spoken in faith, right? Not just spoken out of mental assent. Spoken out of faith. Faith-filled words move the mountain, right? I like this next uh, quote made by a minister. They said, if your mouth will feed your heart faith when you don't need it. Your heart will feed your mouth faith when you do need it. Right? Look, your God and my God is the God that heals. Right? That's your covenant. Let's read some of these covenant scriptures here. My God is the Lord who heals me. You've got to see that, and you've got to take it personal. My God, he's mine. He's my Lord. He's my healer. I know he'll do that for me because I see him as my healer, right? He's taken away sickness from my midst. He's taken away all sickness from me. I choose life. He's the length of my days. You take these scriptures and you put them in your mouth. You make them personal to you. Look at, well, we won't go there yet. I want you to see something here. These are scripture confessions by Brother Caps. And you can take these and you can see yourself in them. And, and what he does in, in these, these books that he has, the God's Creative Power for Healing, if, if you don't have one of those, I, I recommend that, that you get one. Uh, he'll take one, two, three, four scriptures, and then he'll combine them into a confession. Like, I'll read this one. He, take, he takes here Galatians 3.13, 
Romans 8.11, Genesis 1.31, and Matthew 16.19. And this is the confession from these, from these scriptures. Christ has redeemed me from the curse of the law. Therefore, I forbid any sickness or disease to come upon this body. Every disease, germ, and virus that touches my body dies instantly in the name of Jesus. Every organ and every tissue of this body functions in the perfection which God created it to function. I forbid any malfunction in this body. Do you hear the, author the authoritative theme here? I forbid it. Why? Because I have the word on it. Right? Then he takes Romans 12, 1 through 2, John 14, 20, and 1 Corinthians 6, 19. The life of 1 Peter 2, 24 is a reality in my flesh, restoring every cell of my body. My body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. I make a demand on my body to release the right chemicals. My body is in perfect chemical balance. Do you see this? You take the word and then you tell your body what to do. I know it sounds elementary, but it's so simple that we can miss it. Your mountain needs to hear your voice. Look at Mark 11. And again, you've heard Mark 11 numerous times. But put your eyes on it and hear it again. And receive it. Receive it in your spirit. Because I believe we could read it every day and not, and not glean everything out of it. I mean, it, it, the Bible's expanding revelation. And you're not going to get full faith from just reading it even a hundred times. You can put your eyes on it every day and see something new. Mark eleven twenty two 22 says, And Jesus answered, said unto them, Have faith in God. All right. For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be removed and be cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he says shall come to pass, he shall have whatever he says. Okay. You say to the mountain, you say to the symptom, you say to the, to the disease, you say to the report, you say, but you can't doubt. See, you've got to have a heart full of faith. You need, to, you need to build your, see, he said have faith in God first. So this is where you've got to be honest. If I'm in doubt and unbelief, okay, then it does me no good to speak to the mountain. It does me no good to speak to the mountain in mental ascent. Well, I know the word says that. No, hold on. Have you found it in the scriptures? Have you made it personal to you? Have you put it in your spirit? Do you have a measure of faith for what you're speaking to? Okay? Be honest. Because Jesus says right here in verse 22, the very first thing, have faith in God. And that means have faith constantly in God. So, are you in faith about what you're speaking to? If you are, then Jesus says, For I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be removed and be cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he says, see, believe that those things which he says shall come to pass, he'll have whatever he says. And that takes us all the way back to the beginning of this teaching uh, today, You'll have what you say, regardless if it's good or bad, right? So that's why you have to go back and, and rehearse. Look here, like what we talked about right at the beginning. There in Proverbs, he that keeps his mouth keeps his life, but he that opens wide his lips shall have destruction. Those who control their tongue will have a long life. Well, doesn't that sound like, doesn't that kind of sound like what Jesus was just saying there? With speaking to the mountain and you'll have what you say? Okay, you'll have what you say. What are you saying? Are you, are you having what you're saying? Yes, you are. 
if what you're having is not what you want, then go back and check on what you're saying. And what we've learned today is that your tongue, according to Proverbs, is a tree of life. A gentle tongue with its healing power is a tree of life. You take this word and you put it in your spirit and you let it come out of your mouth with a force of faith with, in speaking words of life, your body must respond to, to faith-filled words coming out of your mouth. Your body knows what to do with the words it's hearing. All right? So I just want to encourage you. If, if you're not seeing quite what you want, don't quit. Dive back into this word and find those healing scriptures. I'll give you some to go over. Psalm 103.3. It's real simple. The Lord heals all my diseases. Okay. Build an image on the inside of you that the Lord is healing all your diseases. Build that. Don't focus. Don't focus on the symptom. Don't focus on the report. Because then that gets all your attention. What do Proverbs say in, in chapter 4? Give attention to the word. Give attention, give attention to his healing word. Right? Proverbs 12, 18. The tongue of the wise is health. All right? Joel 3.10. I am strong. Yeah, but I feel weak. I understand that. But the Bible says, let the weak say, I am strong. Right? And we'll go over one more. And then we'll be done. Isaiah 53, 4 and 5. You've heard it, you've heard it, you've heard it, but hear it. Hear it in your spirit. And receive it and take it and use it and speak to your mountain with this verse. Jesus bore my griefs, sickness, weakness, and affliction. He carried my sorrow and pain. He was wounded and tormented for my transgressions. He was bruised for my iniquities. The chastisement of my peace was upon him. With his stripes, I am healed and made whole. Do you see where you can take that and speak that? And you put your faith in his word and you get his results. Amen. So I think we'll stop there today. I hope that, that you've received. I hope that, that we've helped you today. Uh, I just want to thank you for being with us here and online. And uh, we encourage you, if, if, if you've got uh, you know, any, any good testimonies that you want to share with us, you can call here at the church, uh, 913-583-1670. Uh, you can email us at main at buildfaith.net. Or you can write us here at the ministry, uh, Faith Builders International. Uh, it's uh, P.O. Box 452, DeSoto, Kansas 66018. And we sure appreciate you being with us today. So until we see you again, I just want to remind you to keep the switch of faith turned on and to build your faith and frame your world by the word of God. God bless you.